Good morning, my name is Dale. I'm one of the pastors here at Redeemer Bible Church and this week has completely flown by. We are in Romans chapter six. Can you believe it? Romans chapter six is here. And I said yesterday, we're gonna start kind of transitioning a little bit. And what I meant by that is that Paul is now gonna introduce a couple new um, topics. He's gonna, he's gonna mention resurrection. He's gonna tie our righteousness to um, the resurrection of Christ and then a promise that's built into that. And then he's gonna mention and bring in um, slavery. Um, so uh, we're still talking though about um, a law. We're still talking about law versus grace, but now we're just gonna, he's gonna start introducing a couple different concepts here uh, that really will take us through um, chapter seven and then uh, he'll transition there into what it looks like to be to have life in the spirit so a little preview for next week life in the spirit being heirs of christ talking about the future glory that we're going to have in um in christ god's everlasting love for us and then his sovereignty on and on going into the rest of um the book but today we're going to continue to kind of somewhat be where we have been this week but with a couple new topics to discuss. So if you would open up your Bibles to Romans chapter six and we will dive right in. So let me start actually, let me reread um, Romans five uh, verse uh, 20 and 21. So now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased grace, abounded all the more meaning you're not going to out sin god's grace okay so that as sin reigned in death grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through jesus christ our lord okay so romans 6 1 what shall we say then are we to continue in sin that grace may abound so hey you know if i keep on sinning and that means i get more of god's grace why not just keep on sinning, right? Well, unfortunately, Paul's got an answer for that. He says, by no means, no, exclamation point. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might walk in newness of life. So Paul gives the picture there of baptism that when you're being dumped in, you're being baptized into his death. And when you're being raised, you're being raised into newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be reunited with him in a resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin, meaning we are set free. I think about Paul's letter to the Galatians and in Galatians chapter five, verse one, he said, it's for freedom's sake, you have been set free. Therefore, never again submit to a yoke of slavery. And he was talking to Judaizers. He was talking to Christians who were being um, challenged by Judaizers, I should say. Going back to the law. Go back to the law. No. But what, what Paul is saying there and what he's saying here is that the law is useless. Verse 7. For one who has been set, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life He lives, He lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So we live the same life. We're dead to sin and we live a life to God on his behalf, for his purposes, for his will. And sin is not a part of that. 
That's the argument Paul's making here. Let me just let Paul say it. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. You have been set free, Christian. You've been set free. Live free. Don't let the members of your body be swayed or, con- or uh, confused by the sin of this world or what this world has to offer. All of us have been set free. And I'm preaching to me right now. And you're just here watching it. Don't fall for the lie of sin. It ensnares you. And it makes you impotent to complete God's will for your life. Which is what? To live life to him in Christ Jesus. Paul goes on in the argument in verse 15. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. He reiterates what he said just in a little different way in 6.1. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and have been being set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Am I speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations? For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. That All sanctification means an ongoing process of growth. So Paul is saying, hey, and remember, he's probably talking more so to slaves right now than anybody else. They knew what it was to be a slave. He's speaking their language. He's saying, don't, so like you were probably a slave to your masters, right? That's probably what they're thinking. He's using this language on purpose. You were enslaved to sin, but now you're enslaved to righteousness. So you're no longer a slave to sin. You're a slave to Christ, which he's going to say here in a minute for a second. Verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For in the end, those things is death. For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification, its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of life is Jesus Christ. So, shall we continue to sin so God's grace would abound? By no means. We have been set free from sin in order that we could live a life serving God enslaved to God. The Greek word there is doulos, to be a slave. That means you have no rights. You have been bought. Jesus Christ purchased you, if you're a believer. He purchased me. And his work for us is to do his will, his bidding, not our own. So we die to self and we live for him. Just like he did for us. Thanks for joining me this week. Um, we'll see you next week. Um, and we will be in Romans chapter 7. Have a blessed day. <laughs>